Hello everyone, welcome to our show, The Doctor's Chart Show, where you will get to know everything related to kidney disease and its treatment with none other than a renowned kidney expert, Dr. Purudhavan. So, let's welcome him. Welcome to our show, sir. Thank you. So, sir, I have plenty of questions related kidney disease and its treatment. So, let's start the show and the first question is, Almost every year, on the basis of statistics, around 15 million people are diagnosed with kidney disease every year. So, what do you think could be the reason of this rapid increase in this kidney problem? To understand this, you have to go deeper. What are the causes of kidney failure? If we talk about the causes of kidney failure, diabetes and hypertension are the major cause of this CKD. Almost 40% patient of kidney failure comes with the history of diabetes and another 40 percent comes with the history of hypertension that means if the patient of diabetes and hypertension increase in our society it will ultimately result in higher number of ckd patients so if we want to control it we have to cut down the patient of diabetes and hypertension Hypertech. once they are down the ckd patient will be much lower Automatically. yes yes okay so sir as you said that hypertension and diabetes are the root cause of kidney disease so can we say that all the patients of hypertension and kidney disease are destined to face kidney problem? The answer is no. Not all patients of diabetes or hypertension suffer from kidney failure. One out of four patients of diabetes suffer from CKD and same case with the hypertension also. One out of the four patients of hypertension suffer from CKD. Okay. So that means there is a probability of 25% that you may suffer from kidney failure if you are suffering from diabetes or hypertension. Sir, mostly we get to hear that CKD or kidney disease is a silent killer. Is it really right? Yes, CKD is a silent killer because the symptom which comes in early stage are very common. Like if the patient is suffering from weakness, it's a very common symptom. You may suffer from weakness, fatigue because of any reason, because of deficiency of vitamins, minerals, or you can say some kind of deficiency in food. You may suffer from fatigue. Now the symptom is so common that it's very hard for a doctor to diagnose your CKD problem with such a common symptom. And the major cause of CKD is diabetes and hypertension, which itself are very silent in nature. If your BP increases in a short period of time, you may suffer from symptoms like headache. But if the BP is increasing in, at a very slow pace, what will happen? The body get adjusted and body doesn't produce any kind of symptom. Same case with the diabetes. If the diabetes, if your sugar level jump at a sudden, suppose at present it's 180, uh, 100, and suddenly it jumps to 400, what will happen? You may suffer from uh, you know, polyuria, frequent urination. But if the diabetes is developing at a slow pace, what happens? The body adjusts. Okay. When it's progressing at a slow pace and body is adjusting, it doesn't produce any kind of symptom which can be diagnosed easily. That's why CKD itself is a silent killer because even after, you know, when your kidney is damaging, the waste material is accumulating in the body at a slow pace, the body is getting adjusted according to it. And body doesn't produce any kind of symptom until unless it becomes, you know, severe. Uh, huh, crosses the threshold. Hmm. And once the threshold is there, when the symptoms are there, it is already late. Okay. So, sir, uh, but the question rises, how exactly the hypertension or diabetes causes kidney disease? Because it's a, for the viewers, even mm. for me, like uh, I'm, I'm not aware much about this. So, I really want to understand this. For that purpose, you have to understand how our body works. Uh, in our body, there is lots of vessels which carry blood at certain pressure. And that pressure is 120 by 80 mm of Hg. Now, imagine there is a river flowing at a normal day, the bank doesn't get erosed. Hmm? Yes. But when there is a flood in the river, what will happen? There is erosion of the banks. The same thing happening in the body. When the blood is flowing at a normal pressure, it doesn't harm the body. But when the pressure increases, what happens? Because of this pressure, the blood cause impact on the tiny cells, tiny structure, which, you know, nephrons is composed of. Now, nephrons is a a group of tissue and okay. tissue is made up of cells when they face this pressure what happens they evolve and because of pressure they become hard they become sclerosed and as they become sclerosed what happens the efficacy of these nephrons goes down 
and when the efficacy of these nephron to filter out the blood to filter out waste material from the body goes down what happens there is accumulation of waste material in our body like cutinin and urea they start rising in the body so if a patient of ckd wants to control the condition of kidney failure who is suffering from hypertension also patient has to control the blood pressure first so that no further damage to the kidney can be happen so that we can protect the future same in the case of diabetes our body runs on sugar sugar is a, like a fuel to our body each and every cell you know survive on this fuel but when the level of sugar increases above 200 what happens this sugar which is fuel earlier was fuel now it's become poison it starts damaging each and every cell in our body it start you know weakening our eyes you know our heart lungs all vital organs get affected by the high sugar level likewise our kidney you know see kidney are the same because in a kidney if you go deeper in the structure of it there is lots of vessels capillaries which provide blood to the nephrons now when the sugar level increases what happens these tiny uh, structures of uh, you know vessels and capillaries get affected by the high sugar level which ultimately results in the lower blood flow into the kidney okay and when the blood flow goes down the oxygen supply to the nephrons goes down and the cells which are present in the kidney which are filtering the blood start damaging getting damaged and as the damage increases they lose its functionality and the functionality is to filter out all the waste material from the body yes and as the functions goes down the level of creatinine and urea start increasing in our body so okay. that's why it's very important for all kidney failure patient to take control of two things first is blood pressure and second is sugar, sugar. once they are in control at least we can stop the damage further damage the damage which has happened earlier can be reversed to certain point but we can protect our kidney from further damage which is our priority once we start the treatment it's our priority to uh, stop the progression of this kidney failure disease because it's a self progressive disorder once it starts suppose your kidney get damaged by 10% mm -hmm. even after bp is in control sugar is in control it will keep kept you know Happening going kept that. going and yeah. ultimately results in the complete kidney failure we call it esrd end stage renal disease and which ultimately results in dialysis or transplant so it's very important for all kidney failure patient to understand if they want to control their kidney failure disorder they have to control the blood pressure and sugar at the priority basis once they are controlled there will be no further damage to the kidney and which is the first part of the treatment okay thanks a lot sir for this wonderful explanation actually now i got to know how the this diabetes and hypertension is really serious for all the patients yes so we must take care of both these things in spite of taking it lightly yes okay so sir as you uh, like uh, also shared that transplant or uh, dialysis these are generally what we you know here or get to know about the patients that they find that either dialysis or transplant are the two only options for a kidney patient is it really so actually dialysis or transplant both are management of kidney failure what happening in the case of dialysis is when the kidney fails what happens there is accumulation of waste material like urine and urea we are filtering that waste material outside our body through a machine we call it dialyzer okay we are not treating the kidneys we are doing the job of the kidney outside the body so there is no treatment into it yes that means this is the management management hmm? same case with the transplant when our kidney fails completely we you know take kidney of somebody else and then put our inside our body now the problem is that this is not a permanent solution it's a temporary solution because at one point that kidney which we have taken will fail now it's vary from person to person when it will fail sometimes it fails in one month two months one year two year depends person to person from whom we have taken the kidney suppose the kidney is taken from the sibling the the probability of working kidney in a long term is high but if you are taking the kidney from a uh, some outsider what will happen the kidney fail much earlier okay. so both are dialysis and transplant both are management not treatment if we want to treat a kidney failure patient we have to go deeper into the causes of the kidney failure and the major cause are diabetes and hypertension so treatment of a kidney failure start from there
we have to manage blood pressure and sugar first we have to keep the blood pressure into a range of 120 80 mm of hg and we have to keep diabetes in level in control at around 180 okay so we make sure that the sugar level of the patient doesn't cross is 180 milligram per deciliter okay sure once the level these levels are maintained there is no further damage to the kidney number one part first part of the uh, treatment as i told you hmm. earlier in second part of treatment what we have to do we have to increase the kidney function because kidney has super power to increase its function i'll give you an example suppose uh, because of stone because of some kind of infection i have to remove my one kidney. kidney okay even after having a single kidney the level of kidney and urea doesn't increases now the question rises how yes why it's happening because kidney has that superpower to increase this function we have to use this superpower of the kidney in each and every patient of kidney failure suppose a kidney failure patient come to the shriyas with a level of six that means the kidney is damaged by 80 percent now the healthy part which is present in the kidney is only 20 percent now with the help of kidney function resocial treatment which we provided at triage we can increase the functioning of the kidney by again with the multiple of 20 percent that means uh, after treatment the kidney function will increase to 40 from 20 right. and as the functioning of the kidney increases the kidney level will decrease because now the kidney is uh, you know filtering the blood much more efficiently as the get blood get filters what happens the level of kidney will drops to three to and around Almost, level, yes, almost become half. Now the symptoms which are present earlier disappears because blood is much more pure. So we have to use, basically we have to use this functioning, we have to use this superpower of the kidney in each and every patient of the kidney failure. Once the functioning of the kidney increases, the level of kidney and urea goes down. Along with this treatment, we have to take care of the diet also. Okay. Diet is very important part of the treatment because if the patient of kidney failure take lots amount of protein what will happen this extra amount of protein will convert it into the kidney so we have to cut it down with the help of diet we can control a lot of things in our body like kidney urea potassium sodium so in a kidney failure patient we have worked on two parts first is increasing the kidney function second is diet so that the level of kidney in urea and other worse metal can be easily controlled Okay, so sir, uh, I think if I'm not wrong, this is actually the secret of your treatment. Means it's like not a secret. It's a part of treatment because a kidney failure patient must know what kind of things they should eat because ultimately whatever they eat is going to affect their body. So sir, thank you for such a wonderful explanation and I hope really all the viewers are also getting everything. But I would like to ask one more thing. That how soon a kidney failure patient when they come to you or take your treatment so they see a positive result in their reports normally the results are visible within a time span of one month one all month. you have to do is you have to go for kft test kidney function test before starting the treatment and again you have to go for kft uh, test after one month okay and you can see the difference yourself now i will show you few reports of our patients so that you can have an idea how kfrt kidney function research and treatment works okay so thank you so much for such cooperation and for giving us the time and guys if you have any kind of a doubt query so you can just comment us and we would really try to answer all your queries and the most important part in our next episode we will talk about diet so do you have any question or query related to diet just comment us so that we would ask all the questions to our sir dr purudhavan and we would really try to answer all so that's all about for this episode let's meet in our second episode and if you have not subscribed and like our video just do it right now thank you